All right, ladies and gentlemen, I love that groove. I, I move side to side and back and forth. I can't really dance, but it, it helps me with my with my exercises. Dave just so eloquently told me I need to do every day. Do some kind of movement every day. Hey, guys, it's off the fence with Finch. And uh, you locked in, you loaded, and you're ready to go. And tonight we're talking about health and wellness. Listen, guys, if you missed any portion of uh, my first segment, make sure you you tune in and listen on iHeart, on Pandora, on uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever podcasts are played. You can hear Off the Fence with Fitz. My next guest is a skincare scientist turned med spa owner. I think that's a word. <laughs> she says she founded her business Harlem Zen because people of color are often denied, underserved, or damaged in their quest to address aesthetic aesthetic concerns. I hope I pronounced that right. She has open locations in two major cities and has grown from a single operator staff to a dynamic team. And she's one of the serial entrepreneurs we love talking to. And guess what, guys? She's in the peak through right now. Angela McTair is here. All right, your mic ain't on. Turn your mic on, Angela. You come in here looking okay. all, all pretty with no mic on. We can't hear uh, you. I'm well. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you doing this evening? Excellent. Thank you for asking. All right. So how's it going at Harlem Zen today? Uh, busy day as always. You know so, how we do. We keep it going. You guys, are you doing your work with your mask on or you just out there? Mask, two, not one, but two masks and the face shield so you got yeah. double mask and a face shield absolutely yes so you like COVID um, ain't getting in here no biohazard suit yet but um okay keeping All everyone right. safe as much as possible okay so you have some skin care tips that you want to share with our audience to help them get their ass off the fence with skin care <laughs> now, now when it comes to skin care what are some of the issues you're finding in your practice that people have with their skin well, you know, um, one of the things that I love to talk about um, and is getting a little bit more cliche, I promise, I tried to tips that were not your average tips, um, okay. but this is the one cliche one, and that's sun protection. Um, so I really want to emphasize that, especially people of color um, who typically do not do sun protection a lot of times, um, need to add that to the regimen and that's really because a lot of times there's hyperpigmentation as an issue, got some dark spots, got some unevenness. And if that's the case, we're never going to get rid of it if we're not going to commit to the sun protection. So you, you're talking about you're not talking about like sunscreen and all that. kind. Of, what, 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 you know, what kind of <laughs> sun protection do we need? We need security. What, what kind who can okay. protect us from the sun? Understood. Understood. So we do not have to do the beach heavy, thick, white covering, you know, you don't need that beach level coverage, but you do need a basic a SPF 30 would be sufficient. It could be in the moisturizer and just on the way out the door, moi, you could give it a quick covering and just allow the skin to be protected. Now you only have to do the top half of your face. It's okay. Quick and easy. Okay. So, so, what does that actually do for us? You know, we have dark skin, you know. Now, you're lighter than me, I think, or so you look like it. You know, I used to be, I used to be a white baby, and, and then this happened. So, you know, I, I can show you pictures. I can prove it. I was white. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so what do we have to do for, you know, eye skin tone to, you know, what are some of the things we can use to protect us? Um, so it really doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, a basic moisturizer. It could be an average Cetaphil, but you want that SPF 30 in it. It's easy. It's easy. You just add it on, on top of whatever your normal skincare is. If you're heading out, you know, you're going to have some sun exposure. It's an easy thing to do. Just add it in. So, so it says, it says SF uh, San Francisco 30. <laughs> is that what it says? Yeah. You'll see the letter S, the letter P, the letter F, and then okay. Uh, I'll take a 15 if that's all I can get. I'll take it and be grateful. But um, okay. yes, uh, 30 is a nice, even middle of the road. 
Okay. Just make sure your skin is protected. You'll thank me in 10 years. Um, ten years. We're we gonna call you and thank you in ten years. Yes, you're gonna call okay. me personally. Um, because it really does show up on your skin if you're not protecting it regularly. Gotcha. All right. So what is maintaining cell turnover? Why so, is that such a key? <laughs> I know you like what are you talking about right now? What, what so, are you talking? In terms of cell turnover, um, that's that would be your exfoliation. So um we want the cells. As we get older, the cells are not turning as fast. So imagine your skin is kind of like a brick wall, almost like we've got these layers of bricks. And over time, the bricks kind of keep flying off and we get to a nice smooth level. But as we get older, the turnover happens a little bit slower. So mm -hmm. when you see those babies and the young people and the skin is so tight and fresh and perfect, um that's because they're always getting that fresh new baby skin and as we get a little bit older it's not happening as fast so we have to help it out a little bit as we help the process it gets uh -huh. better because we can take off the dead skin cells we can take off all of the layers that kind of start to build up on the skin so it would be a great thing if we can exfoliate regularly mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now, mm -hmm. before I ask my second question, the first question is how often should we exfoliate? Understood. So that's different for different skin types and for different situations. If we're working towards a goal, if we've got some unwanted stuff going on. It might be a little bit more frequent than others. And the type of exfoliation would change based upon what kind of concerns we had. So imagine if someone had really active acne, some pustules or some raised inflammation on their skin. You don't mm -hmm. want to go and scrub that. Um, you want to treat it differently. So we probably do some chemical exfoliation to get the cells turning over versus going and scratching and scraping it and spreading the infection around. So okay. um, it's a kind of a different approach. I would say consult with a skincare professional if you're having a particular skin issue mm -hmm. and get some very kind of specific to you advice. Okay. So my second question is that baby bottom skin you was talking about, is that what you got right now? <laughs> um, I would say that per se. Uh, you know, the hairdresser never gets done. So uh, uh -huh. unfortunately, um, we don't get as much care as we'd like because we're busy taking care of everyone else. Um, <laughs> Your skin looks gorgeous right from back then. Is it because of 3D or what? What's going on? Uh, I I'll just take the compliment. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you saying because you're not you're not in a whole lot of light, I can't see all the other <laughs> stuff going on. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm doing the best that I can. Um, thankfully, I have a little bit of knowledge about this, which helps guide my decisions. But um, in general, uh, I'll be honest, I could do a lot better. <laughs> you got the secret code, though. So so. So in your profession, you guys use a lot of terms and adjectives that the common person like myself don't understand because I saw a term called mask. It, sound, it looked like it said mask, but it had an E and E on the end. So what, what, is, that, what is that word? <laughs> so that is a made up word that is new to the scene. Okay. So that's not you. That's that's new jargon that just came around, I guess, maybe June, something like that. Um, oh, yeah. So people are now experiencing acne that is related to their masks mm. wearing habits. So they call it mask knee. So um, one thing that can be done for that, I wanted to bring it up tonight because it's new and it's pretty relevant. Um, a couple of tips. I find that clients come in and they're like, oh, I'm suddenly having all of this breakout. And I don't know why I'm looking, the forehead's clear and clean and it's like, Huh, probably has something to do with your mask wearing habits. <laughs> now, oh yeah, the mask. So um, in case anyone's wondering or unsure, their skin is certainly just out of the blue having some challenges that they weren't accustomed to. A lot of times I found that it is related to the mask. Okay. So um, a, a lot of times when we'll see in that area specifically. So um, one trick that's worked really well for me is the double masking. So um, I'll put one of the cheap 
disposable masks underneath my more um, solid cloth mask. Mm -hmm. And um, it allows me to have a clean surface next to my skin at all times. Gotcha. So I've got that skin that's just waiting for, give me a reason to act a fool. And so um, I don't give it a reason as much as I can. Gotcha. And if you're looking for a nice, good quality mask, we have a lot of masks in our store. Make sure you stop mm -hmm. by I Am Harold Finch to pick up one of those quality cloth masks that you was talking about. Mm -hmm. I think we have some that says Off the Fence, some that says Fence Mob. <laughs> Just go by there and check it out. <laughs> Excellent. I definitely need to check it out. All right. So, so because when you use that term, I, I was like, I know my GED is under investigation, <laughs> but I thought... <laughs> I thought it said mask, mask in management. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so and now, the other thing that can happen is that people will just wear their mask and they'll just pick it up and wear it, pick it up and wear it. And even if they're cleaning it regularly, a lot of times the detergents that are in the cleansing process are still in the fabric. And so okay. the skin is just not used to all of that. Our skin, it's new, it's friction, it's heat. Um, the oils are trapped under there. Sometimes it gets sweaty under there and it's the skin is going to fight back. It's not going to be appreciative of that kind of environment. OK, so one of the other tips you give, you say uh, you want people to and I, I'm assuming this is so that they can develop healthier skin. Is, is, is that the whole thing is you want them to incorporate targeted treatment products in, in their regimen? Yes. Absolutely. Now, what, if, what if they don't have a regimen? <laughs> well, um, again, we've got wonderful skincare professionals out here that will sit with you, do a free consultation and help you build a regimen. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, there is a lot of quality products that are very affordable, um, but we should at least be doing the basics of cleansing and moisturizing. And that's what I find most people are doing. Um, so when I ask, what is your skincare regimen like? They'll say, oh, I cleanse with the Neutrogena, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I use this moisturizer. Um, so that's great. But unfortunately, if we have a particular goal we're trying to work towards, um, that's not going to get us there. Um, so I have a really bad analogy that I use. Um, so bear what, with me. What is that? <laughs> I would love to hear it. Let me hear it. Yeah, so um, it's a little crude, but um, in general, unfortunately, we have people who are going to the hospital a lot now, sick. Mm -hmm. So um, you go to the hospital and they give you water and healthy food and lots of rest, um, but they don't give you any medicine. Okay, That's kind of what we're doing when we don't give the targeted treatments to our skin. So you're just giving it care and not treatment. So we really want to think about um, treating the skin and saying, OK, well, what am I trying to correct? Is it dull skin? Is it um, buildup? Of, is it acne? Is it aging skin? Whatever those issues are, um, really seeking out specified treatments to work on it. So um, whenever you build your regimen, it's not just, well, I cleaned it. I washed my face. Um, <laughs> we need to kind of be focusing on we're moving towards a specific goal. What are we trying to accomplish right now? Um, so I really want people to have a more strategic plan in mind when they're crafting their skincare regimen. I know people talking about, man, I got to have a regimen when I work out. I got to have one when I eat. Now I need one for my skin. I ain't going to never get my ass off the fence. Oh, my goodness. They're going to get off the fence. They're going to get off the fence. That's what they're thinking now. We're All right, so, inch so, by inch, they're gonna get off the fence though. Now, this next tip that I saw, I was like, "Uh oh!" Now, ladies, I know a lot of y'all tune into this show. This this might hurt. You <laughs> talked about beware of the tweezers. Yes, Why? beware of the tweezers. Beware of the tweezers. So, unfortunately, um, another thing that comes along that little bit of hormonal imbalance. Okay. And to be clear, it was for both men and women. As people start to use tweezers to remove unwanted hair growth or to remove grown hair, we're creation in the skin. And unfortunately, that you 
go in the direction that we want. That same reason we're looking mm-hmm. at sun protection. We're always trying to keep the skin out of the state. So uh, the skin calm and out. So using the tweezer, inflammation, which for, especially for skin of color can a lot of turn into a hyperpigmentation. So now we've got a dark spot. We took the hair out, but now spot or a raised part or might be having some other texture in the area that's not what we want. Um, so I always try to advise people that if you're fair with the tweezer, if there's a tweezer in the car and a tweezer in your purse and a tweezer at the nightstand, we need to get some professional help involved because it's likely not going to end well. So um, it's an ongoing thing and it's never going to get to the point where you want it to be. So the best bet would be to involve a professional to help you professionally remove the hair. Okay. Uh, A listener says, I used to have great skin and all I used was Lancome. Now I have acne on my forehead that I can't get rid of. What oh, causes that? No. We should they have a conversation. Um, so a lot of times I find that forehead acne um, can be oftentimes linked to hair care. Okay. Um, believe it or not, I try to look at people environmentally. Um, what are the outside um, influencers that could happen? It's almost like you need to be a skin detective working um in this space because some changed um, for someone and they may not even notice it until you start questioning them about it. So um, a new hairstyle or the swoop of bangs coming across or using a new hair oil. And basically when you say hair oils, products, things like that, um, they're on our warmest part of our body here, our head. So as that warms up and starts making its face, um, it causes issues. So I would say um, try to look and see if anything might have changed in your regimen. Um, don't ignore your hair care regimen when you analyze it. Was a new product put in? Are we wearing a new hat? You know, the, the brim or a lot of ladies, unfortunately, that I um, speak to will find out that they're using a wrap at night to kind of maintain their hair. and. Yeah can get very oily and full of product and contribute to forehead um, breakouts. Got you. All right. So so if people want to connect with you, how can they do it? So we're on everything, Instagram, Twitter, Harlem Zen, um, across the board where we're always Harlem Zen. So um, they can reach out to us or they can call us and schedule a consultation. Um, you could uh, book a consultation at harlemzen.com. And if you have some specific skincare questions and you need to sit with a pro and get some clarity, we would be happy to do that. Oh, now this was painless, right? <laughs> I think so. Um, you had a great time. Yes, absolutely. I enjoyed right. it. And then Dave said we can eat Cheetos, so I'm good. <laughs> In that time frame now. <laughs> In the time frame. In that time frame. So Yes, sir. Well, well, thank you so much, Angela, for joining us. Uh, we're going to have you come back again uh, very soon so we can we can talk uh, about some other things that you can help people with. Because a lot of people are on the fence, regardless, across the board, no matter what the subject is. And I think you're a great uh, influence and expert in that field. And um, I think you'll be great on this show. Wonderful. Thanks so much for having me, Finch. It was a All pleasure. Right. All right, guys, when we come back, we got someone that's going to help you with your smile. Uh, I'll just, it's what they call it. It's, it's a great thing. I love it. We got more off the fence when we return. Don't go anywhere. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Down. I have the radio on the telly. You're in the mix. All of them. 